Hello folks, how you doing? Okay, today we're going to be tying uh, a simplified version of the firecracker. Now I get asked how to tie this pattern quite a bit, actually. Uh, and there is a video out there. Um, but me being me, <laughs> I tweak it quite a bit. So um, it's not too different from the original one that I tied. But um, it is tweaked slightly. And I tend to tweak it a little bit more when I downsize these because... You know, you want to speed the tying up and make them a little bit quicker. So this one is literally just a synthetic called Canacolon. Um, it's, you know, it's, it, you can use SF Blend, uh, Glisten Glint, uh, uh, JBM Pike Skins. It's, it's, you know, it's all very similar stuff. But, um, I've just got some no-name stuff that I use, which does the job for me. Um, need some Polar Flash. Uh, some Nyat is useful. You don't have to use Nyat, but I recommend it because you'll get a much more durable fly if you do. Um, uh, some Angelina fiber and a little bit of fuzzy fiber to, in the dubbing loop in the middle, to, just to create that nice yellowish orange uh, color blend. And that's obviously that's why I called it the firecracker because of that. Um, so I use this fly a lot during the summer months, spring, summer, uh, sort of beginning of autumn. Um, I do like to fish small flies as well as big flies uh, and I use it especially on the, uh, the Midlands Reservoirs and obviously at the moment where they're not open but hopefully they're open soon and, and I use it primarily to target Xander um, but pike, will, pike eat it uh, as do big perch as well and we know the Midlands Reservoirs are full of good quality fish like that um, so without me talking too much Let's um, just get started with the tying. So in advice, we've got an Arex Crepe Red to 610-10, which is only a small stream up, so we don't need to go any bigger than that. Uh, so the first thing I do is I like to kill my flies a little bit. So I add a little bit of lead wire to the bend. Four or five wraps around is all you need. Just make sure you push that lead down around the edges so it's nice and flush. So I bring the lead wire to about here. I don't want it too far down because that'll interfere with hookups. So I'll just bring it just off the bend there. And to fix that in place, you've got two options. You can use some shrink tubing over the top, which I sometimes do, or you can just put some UV resin down. So in this case, I'm just gonna put some UV. You don't need too much. And if it if it comes loose, I'll just stab myself with a needle. Good start. I just wrap that resin around into the, uh, the grooves of the wire so it's secure. And just give that a flash of the torch. That should do it. Now thread we're going to be using GSP 100. To be honest, you can use anything, but I find dubbing loops with GSP a little bit better because there's very little stretch in this thread. So bring your thread down. Bring your thread down to the point and stop there and build a bump. It doesn't really act to flay the materials too much. It just prevents them slipping down the, sh the, uh, the hook if they aren't particularly secure. Now, usually, or well, pretty much 99% of the time, I like to weight this fly because I like it to have a jigging action in the water and to get down quick. Um, so I'm gonna add lead wire to the mid of the fly. So we're probably talking about seven or eight wraps it's never an exact thing i just like to add a bit of weight in it just to get it down like i said that should do us what that also helps as well it's because we're using strong fuzzy fiber in the mid in a dubbing loop <clears throat> that will create a little bit of buoyancy so that just counteracts that let's bring your thread up and just build a transition between the thread and the wire Come across, do the same on the other side. And then wrap over a few times, 
just to make sure it's well secured down. And that should do it. Now for the tail, we're going to be using um, synthetic. Now, this is called Kanakalon. It's branded many different things. Um, I won't say what, because I don't think that's really fair. But it's, you know, it's a standard wavy synthetic. It's not too wavy, but it's got a little bit of curl in there, which I like in the material. Uh, it makes it easier to work with, and also it moves better in the water, I find, if you go quite sparse with it. And if you put too much on, you know, it's going to fish like a wet sock. So you really need to go sparse with this material. Sparse the better. So we're not talking about much here at all. So we're talking probably about that much. And we're going to come tie on the top and tie on the bottom. But we're going to taper it a little. So I'm just going to cut probably about five inches for the top and about three and a half inches for the bottom. So we're talking about that length for the top. Now it's really up to you. I mean, I tie these in various sizes. So if you're going to tie a six inch fly, this is a four and a half inch, but six inch fly, you would increase that size. If you're going to tie a 12 inch fly, then you, I'd need to zoom out. <laughs> and you need to pretty much use the whole length of this. Um, so it's up to you. I mean, I tie this in various sizes, like I said. Now, what I like to do with this, I mean, you could use angel hair or uh, Angelina fiber to run some flash for it, but I like, um, I do like polar flash through this because it's a little bit more durable. So we're talking probably no more than five or six strands here. So I'm going to add some to the, to both um, synthetic materials. And what I tend to do with this is just to create a taper but also blend that flash in so I tend to pull the materials through and then back on top of themselves and it starts building a taper up so we're just pulling those ends out make sure they're tapered let's give it a roll there we go so I'm going to tie this down 40 60 and then fold back once I've done the bottom I'm going to tape that a bit more like that loose wraps over the top and tighten down and do the same for the bottom try and taper that material like that let's turn your vice over tie it down once you're happy with it and then bring it in between the points so we're talking probably about 55 45 on this one so 55 towards the back, 45 towards the front. Tie down. Just make sure everything's straight underneath. So look over top. Now add a little bit of glue. You can use whatever you want. I prefer the slow setting glues. Because they're not quite as uh, pongy. And... and if you haven't followed any of my videos, you know I'm allergic to super glue, so I can't use it. So. Don't leave a comment, why don't I use super glue? Because I can't. And then bring that material back underneath and tie over the top to create a secure tail. So that's the tail done. Next we're going to create a, a doubling loop of yellow. I like to add a bit of yellow on my fly, you probably know if you follow me on Instagram. Oops, so it slipped. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to a bit of glue over that lead. You can use lead free if you want whatever wire of choice. I know there's certain regulations where you can't use lead in your rivers or lakes. So just to make this nice and clean, I'm going to add a little bit of dubbing. Now it can be anything. This is Glister Sparkle Dub from Vineyard. I use quite a lot of this just to fill in the, uh, the shank and you know, cover the exposed thread wraps. I tie that down over the top. Doesn't need to be too tidy. You're just covering those thread, thread wraps. Now get your spin tool. Mine's very tangled at the moment because I haven't cleaned it since the last time I used it. Go 
again you need to wax your thread so create a dubbing loop which we did earlier wax your thread wax is essential for this now we're going to take some strong fuzzy fiber you don't have to use this just find a, a fuzzy material just to create a bit of volume and a, you know a bit of a, a different shade of color so we don't need much I'm just going to cut this into I don't know inch and a half down to half an inch sizes I'm just cutting that now it takes two seconds there we go. so literally we're talking about that much hardly anything but it just creates a little bit of volume and like I said it's got that nice yellowy tinge to it which I like in the fly whether it makes too much of a difference, I don't know, but I'm confident fishing with flies with yellow in. Now I tend to, when I spin this up, I tend to hold the base to stop those threads wrapping around the other materials. Now you can use a clip, but I still find it wrapped. So I always put my finger here and then I just spin. Now don't worry if it starts wrapping on itself because we can get the uh, bobkin out and just unpick that in a second. So it doesn't need too much of a spin. So it looks a bit of a mess now, doesn't it? So what I go do is get the bobkin, one without glue on the end of it. I just unpick where it's wrapped around itself. It comes, you know, comes away very easy. And you know, if you spin enough, the material won't come out. So you know, make sure you give it a good spin. To lock those materials in place. There we go. So we're looking for something like that. I'm just going to fold that back and rub them together like this. So it's not a lot, but we're just going to, you know, create that color blend up on top of this dub in here. So we'll wrap that round. Now we're going to come up and quite, you know, spaced it quite well because we want to end that yellow where that dubbing ends. Probably done a little bit more on this one, but it will do. There we go. So trim that down. Next, we're going to go for some orange, which I've lost. Oh, it's here. If you hear a meow, the cats. Getting in on the act again. She wants feeding. I can't feed you, cat. Right, so we just need a little bit of orange. No more than half an inch. Very thin amount, because we're going to create an orange little hot spot on each side. Now, sometimes I add this to the dubbing loop. Sometimes I don't. But if you don't, if, that's, if, you, if you tie it like this, you get a bit better control of where that hot spot goes, rather than all the way around the head. So I'm going to do the same on this side. Cats me out at me and she's got food in her tray. <laughs> she likes to get on the act. She likes to be in YouTube videos. There we go. So that's, this is what we're talking about. Just a little bit of orange. Don't need too much. And for the last step, we don't include the eyes. Uh, we're going to blend some Nyat up. Quite a few questions about Nyat uh, and blending it. It's very, very simple. Um, so for this, for the, for, the, for the back, we're going to use three different colours. Now I've got a dark grey. It's a pretty large piece, this one. Um, I've got a, like a, I think it's called mackerel green. Um, but if you check out the bigstreamers.com website, they'll have all the colour descriptions on there and you should be able to match them up. And this one's a silver. And I really like both, all these three colours, but they work well work they they look really nice blended together so but you don't need much of it so i'm just going to take some turquoise if i don't drop my scissors or green whatever how you want to describe it now we're going to take some the same amount of silver and we're going to take the same amount of of the gray color I 
maybe a little bit more of the grey. So what we're going to do, so we put them together and we're just going to pull them through and blend them up. Um, I'm not too worried about having some of those short under fibres in there, um, but I will, I will cone that a little bit because this is quite a, we're not creating a big fat head on this fly. We're, um, we want it to be quite a slim profile. So what I like to do as well is add some Angelina fibre into the, the materials just to give it a little bit of flash. Ignore the cat. <laughs> I'll feed her in a minute. There we go, like that. So I'll take the comb there and I'll just, just run that through to get rid of any fluffy, real fluffy bits. So we're talking, you know, quite a long piece. because we want, we want the material to come over the back towards the tail. Like so. So before I tie it down, I'll add a little bit of glue. There we go. Like that. So about 60-40. Tie it down. Now we're going to do... We're going to give it a white belly. Now you don't have to use night on the belly, but I like to just to keep the materials the same. Because sometimes if you don't, they look a bit mismatched. So what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to cut it in half. And the night, night cuts well. Obviously you need to taper the material. So we're talking about that much. So I'm going to cut it into two inches. And I'm just going to taper the material cat's going to come and stab me in a minute. Go and eat your food up. Got food, eat it up. High maintenance cats. Right, well, what I'm doing this, I'm just going to put some more Angelina through it, just to give it a bit of added sparkle. Don't have to. It's up to you. I so said these videos are really just guides. I don't expect you to go and copy them exact for, you know, exactly the same. Just go and create your own colour scheme or whatever. But really they're just to give you the, the time points and, the, and that's it. So here we go. It's a night underneath. And we're going to tie that down, I don't know, 55, 45. Just to create that taper. Now what you need to do is just check the materials are in, you know, in line on top and not over one, more, over one side more than the other. I'm going, to do, I'm going to push them back, but rather bring this material through the middle of the bottom, which doesn't really create a nice finish, I'm just going to angle my vise and just fold it back, like so. I can keep my vise from, stop my vise from moving. Hopefully it won't get out of focus now. And just want to build a, a dam in front, push those materials back. I mean, it could come over the top, but it doesn't create a particularly neat looking head. So I'm just going to bring my comb, I'm just going to come through it. Like so. Make sure those, those bottom materials are evenly distributed between the hook. Like that. And whip finish. Now it looks a bit weird at the moment because the materials on top are poking a little bit higher than what's underneath. So that's cool. We can sort that out in a second. So next we're going to put some eyes on this. Now I'm trying to move away from using tear mender on these because they're quite small. Uh, and I find I like tear mender because it helps me control the night. But what it's not very good at is create a little bit of volume on the head with the eyes um, and also if you fish it all day long with tear mender, tear mender tends to go white in the water and you can see it. Now, I don't think it makes a difference but it, it bothers me a little bit. And the other thing as well is I noticed that tear mender tends to go a bit yellowy especially if you're tying um, 
applying it over white materials. Now you could use something like Deer Creek white UV resin, um, but to be honest, I'm just going to glue these eyes on with some Evo Stick Serious glue, which is like a gel type glue. It just takes a little bit of time to set, which is good in a way because it gives me a bit of time to position the eyes at where I want them. I'll do the same on the other side, just add a little bit of glue to the eye itself, a sort of blob in the middle, and that spreads as you press it down then. I'm going to bring those materials down because as that sets out, we can sort that out. Right, so we just want to let that set for you know five minutes. Just keep checking it, make sure it's positioned where you want. Right, that's starting to set now. So we're just going to put that in the vise, but we're going to angle it slightly because you find with you know very fine UV resins, they will seep into the materials. So we want to make sure we don't crowd the eye, and also we don't want the material to seep all to, into the fibres because it will just create quite a stiff material. So we just need a little drip. We're just going to use the bobkin just to blend that material in by holding that material, the the, uh, the night out back. And then just check your eyes uh, how you want them. And then just blast it with a torch. Get the angle you're looking for. Like so. That looks pretty good. Yeah, the eyes are still straight. Just check they're straight. Now I don't need to do that underneath, but if I've got a quite a steep angle underneath, I will do the same, like I do with the back of the fly. So that looks pretty, pretty neat. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some, some resin. I like to hold the fly when I do this. Just some resin over those tape eyes. So I didn't mention what those tape eyes were. They're just um, I think they're funky, funky tape eyes. They're quite. I find it quite hard to get tape eyes. Um, but those are, I think, made by Funky. There's various other brands out there that do them. Um, I prefer tape eyes on these because I just find them more durable. Um, alternatively, you can use Deer Creek ones. They they, they make uh, Nick makes them quite flat, which is good. It makes them a bit stronger. I'm not really a fan of the big dome 3D type. I just find they you know they fall apart. They come off the backing quite quite easily unless you really cover them. So there we go. A bit of UV fine flex over the top. We'll do the same on the other side. Come over the nose as well. Make sure you've got, you know, pretty generous coating. Whoops. And blast out of the torch. They don't need to look pretty, these flies, you know. There you go. That's that, and the last step is just to, where, where that white thread is on top, I like to just get a marker and just try and colour match. Um, colour match that night on top. So I'm just thinking what I'm going to use. I'm probably going to use like a sort of darkish greenish colour. Just give it a colour in. Maybe a bit darker than that. Just to blend it in so it looks a bit more professional. And there we go. That's it. So there's one I tied earlier. Oh, last step, I nearly forgot, is to give it a little trim. Because sometimes you can have a few um, a few materials that don't don't play ball. So if you look, if you brush it out, you can see that I've got a, a few materials. So if you just give it a gentle trim and just follow the bait fish shape. Just pull those straight down. Do the same on the back. If there's any 
wild fibers that don't want to sit right. That's all you need to do. And that is a super easy bait fish to tie. Now it's the firecracker. I think I mentioned, I'll mention it at the beginning. I've mentioned it at the beginning already, but um, you know, it's just a simplified version of the firecracker. And the fire, I call it firecracker because of the yellow and orange in it. And it's a, you know, it's the style of fly that I like to tie. Um, but it's dead effective. Caught zander, pike, perch on this pattern, and this size. Um, so it's, it tends to be my go-to uh, a lot of the times when I target those fish. So yeah, give it a try. You know, let us know if you catch. I'm sure you will. And um, maybe subscribe if you like this video. And uh, letting us know what you think. Leave a comment. Give it a like or whatever. It's up to you. Uh, anyway, we'll catch you on the next one. See you later. Bye.